Welcome back to statistics. I thought it might be useful to do a video where we just kind of work through a problem as it appears on WebAssign, a problem involving confidence intervals, and kind of uh, map out the, the process of just working the problem. Uh, and so uh, we'll take a few minutes and do that right now. It might be helpful, I think, to uh, kind of summarize uh, what we know about confidence intervals right now. There's really two situations we deal with, right? One is when sigma is known, and here you see the summary of the procedure for computing the confidence interval, uh, and one for when sigma is unknown, and here's that, uh, that same procedure uh, there. Um, I don't want to oversell this. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just the procedures that you use to compute the things. We spent quite a bit of time talking about what confidence intervals mean and how they behave, and uh, that's all important stuff. But uh, the procedures are uh, important too, and uh, you know, uh, maybe having this summary would be helpful. This will be available on our Canvas page, and you can certainly use it. Or you could make your own summary. That might be even better. Just the process of summarizing the procedures might help you uh, work your way through them in an actual problem. Uh, if you look at the procedures, uh, they're very similar in outline between when sigma is known and when sigma is uh, unknown. You can see that. Uh, just by the form of the summary, right? When sigma is known, for instance, uh, the margin of error extends from uh, the the sample mean that's in the center of the margin of the confidence interval, and uh, it the confidence interval goes from the sample mean minus the margin of error to the sample mean plus the margin of error, and that's of course the same for uh, a confidence interval when sigma is unknown. The differences lie in how you compute the margin of error. In uh, the case when sigma is known, it's a critical value z star from the standard normal distribution times the standard deviation of x bar. And that gives you the margin of error when sigma is known. When sigma is unknown, it's slightly different. The critical value now comes from the t distribution with the appropriate degrees of freedom and that gets multiplied by the standard error of x bar, which is our best estimate for the standard deviation of x bar. Notice for the standard error, s over radical n, we've simply replaced the sigma in the formula for the standard deviation of x bar with our best estimate for it, which is s. And that, so the, the, the main difference is in how you compute the margin of error uh, between the cases when sigma is unknown versus uh, when it's known. So um, let's take a look at an actual problem. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, and this is in your homework. Uh, I put an example problem up and uh, I would like you to do this. There's only one problem in this example. Let's pop it open. And uh, you'll get different numbers than I have here. But uh, let's go through it with these numbers and then you can try your own version and see if you get the correct answers. So the problem reads, uh, the latest antidepressant product uh, is, is currently, sorry, the latest antidepressant produced is currently involved in the testing process. Eight subjects have joined the testing process where the mean number of days taken before side effects disappeared is being examined. The results are as follows. And then we have uh, those uh, eight observations. Those are the number of days that it took for each subject before the side effects of the medication uh, disappeared. So you see quite a bit of variation there. 30 days for the first subject, 6 for the second, 24 for the third, and so on. Uh, and what the problem is going to step us through is computing a 95% confidence interval for the true mean time that it would take among all patients to take this drug for the side effects to wear off. And so uh, let's, uh, let's begin. 
uh, when you see a problem like this, you should really go back and, and sort of ask yourself, uh, you know, where what what's the overall picture here? Remember, there's two cases we have to consider so far. One is when sigma is known, and the other is when sigma is unknown. And when sigma is known, we use Z procedures in the standard normal distribution. When sigma is unknown, we use T procedures and the T distributions. So in this case, uh, looking through the statement of the problem, there's no information given about sigma whatsoever. And uh, we're, we are trying to estimate a mean, but we don't know sigma. So this would be a situation in which sigma is unknown. And so we're going to uh, use T procedures in that case. And you might want to just make yourself a note about that. Uh, you know, working through and reading a statistics text is often a process of, uh, it's not a spectator sport. I'm just writing down the things that I figure out about this problem as I go, and I would recommend that, you know, you do the same. Okay, so we know it's a T distribution problem. What's next? Well, let's look at where they take us here. How many degrees of freedom are present in the study? Well, that's certainly a reasonable question. Since it's T distribution, we have to use the right T distribution, right? We have to know the appropriate degrees of freedom. And uh, for these types of estimation problems, the degree of freedom is always one less than the sample size. Here, our sample size is n equal 8, and so that means our degrees of freedom would be one less than that, uh, or 7. And so I've gone ahead and made that little note as well to myself, just kind of keeping thing, keeping my ducks in a row, more or less. So the degrees of freedom are 7. Uh, let's uh, see what's next. The point estimate. Okay, what's that? Well, we're trying to estimate the true mean time, right, that all patients uh, would, would take. Uh, if you could look at all patients, uh, what would be the true mean time before side effects wear off? That mean is unknown, but we do have sample data. The point estimate is our best information about that true mean given our sample data. Our sample data are those eight measurements there. So our point estimate would be the sample mean from those eight estimates, uh, those eight uh, observations. Uh, we've got the use salt button here, so let's use salt to compute that sample mean. So I'm just going to click on the use salt button, up pops the uh, salt calculator, and there you see our data. And uh, let me go to just to the descriptive statistics tab here, and we'll take a look at what it gives us. Here we see that the mean number of days in our sample was 18.125. That's the point estimate we're looking for. That's my X bar value, right? So X bar would be 18.125. And I have gone ahead uh, and you know added that to my sort of uh, little tally sheet of uh, what I know about this problem as we work. So that would be our best guess as to the, uh, the, uh, the, the true mean time. It's our point estimate x bar. I'm going to enter it here, 18.125. And uh, let's move on. The next question is, what is the standard deviation in days of the sample? Well, the, the data is given to us in units of days, so that's good. We don't have to worry about that. The standard deviation of the sample, let's think carefully about that, uh, because there's several standard deviations uh, that we're interested in, right? There's the standard deviation in the population. Uh, there's the standard deviation of X bar. And then when using the T distribution, of course, we have to uh, estimate that using the standard error of X bar. What is this question asking me for? The standard deviation of the sample. Well, my sample is the, the, these, uh, these values that we've observed. So those eight values here. So when they ask for the sample, the standard deviation in the sample, they're asking for the sample standard deviation. We can uh, uh, 
read that off the descriptive statistics table that we computed and solved. The standard deviation of our sample data is 7.5297. So I'm going to make a note of that. 7.5297. And I'll go back and enter it into uh, the problem here. 7.5297 days. 7.5297. Uh, and they asked for four decimal places, so that's what I've got. So it looks like I'm good there. And I've also made a note of that, again, in my own little uh, uh, scratch work here. Uh, notice I'm using the symbols that we use uh, in the formulas. X bar for the point estimate. S for the sample standard deviation. Uh, okay, what's next? Well, now, in part C, they're asking me directly for the 95% confidence interval for the true mean. So here, I've got a little work to do. I need to calculate first uh, the margin of error and then slap that on either side of our point estimate X bar. So uh, here, uh, the summary sheet uh, might be useful. Um, we had, uh, we, we, we know we're in the situation now where sigma is unknown. So here's our formula for the margin of error. It's a critical value from the T distribution times the standard error of X bar, which is our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So we're gonna need to compute both of those things. Uh, let's start with the standard error. That's s over the square root of n. Well, I've already got s from uh, my descriptive stats tab, and so I'm ready to compute that standard error. I'll need my uh, sample standard deviation, which is s over the square root of n. So s is 7.5297. And n, my sample size here, is 8. So I'll need to divide that by square root of 8. And so I've gone ahead and started that calculation here on my little scratch sheet. I'm, again, labeling things with the appropriate statistical symbol. So it's a standard error of x bar I'm computing, and it's that s over the square root of n. So I'll just go ahead and calculate that now on the calculator. You could use your phone calculator for this. 7.5297 divided by the square root of 8. And I get 2.6621509655, blah, blah, blah. Let's go back to the uh, problem and uh, see what uh, we actually need here. Uh, we're needing three decimal places in our final answer, so I better not round this value uh, too much uh, because it's a step along the way to that final answer. Uh, so uh, since I need three, three decimal places in the final answer, I'm going to go ahead and round this to five places. So my standard error is 2.66215. And I hope you can read that. Uh, I've just uh, can made that computation, finished the computation of the standard error. And I've rounded to five places because I'm trying to avoid round off error, right? I need three places of accuracy in the final result. So I don't want to round everything to three places right now because then round off error would surely uh, build up and throw my answer off. So I'm, I'm being a little conservative here, taking two extra decimal places. So my standard error is 2.66215. Uh, again, uh, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to compute a margin of error and then the confidence interval. And so uh, there's the standard error I just computed. Now I need that critical value, T star, uh, to complete the margin of error. So uh, let's compute that. How do we do that? Well, this is a problem where sigma is unknown, so we're using the t-distribution. I need to go to the t-distribution with the appropriate degrees of freedom. So I'm going to go back to SALT, go to my distribution calculators, and I need to choose the t-distribution with 
seven degrees of freedom, right? Because uh, my sample size is eight. And for a 95% confidence level, I'm looking for the middle 95% of that distribution. So let me go to the between tab here and ask for 95% probability in the middle. There you see it. And the answer, your T star value, is the upper bound. It would correspond to this upper bound over here. It's 2.3646. So my T star value is 2.3646. And uh, again, I recorded that value here in my scratch work. And uh, actually, it looks like I recorded it incorrectly. It's 2.3646, not 7. So got to be careful. Every little decimal place matters, right? 2.3646. Okay, I've got T star and I've got the standard error, so now I'm ready for the margin of error. The margin of error is just my T star times my standard error, and so that's going to be my 2.3646 times the standard error, which was 2.66215. And let's just do that real quick. Uh, times 2.3646 and I'm getting 6.29492. Again, I'll keep five places just so I don't build up any rounding error or any significant rounding error. 6.29492. That is my margin of error now for 95% confidence. So uh, just kind of keeping a tally of everything along the way here. You know, this helps in a lot of ways. If I find out that I made a mistake, I've got all this work recorded, and I can kind of go back, figure out where the mistake was, and then keep the rest. Uh, so that's helpful. Uh, we've got the margin of error. We're looking for the 95% confidence interval. So all we have to do now is add and subtract that margin of error to the sample mean x bar that we got. So my 95% confidence interval is going to go from x bar plus or minus m. That would mean our 18.125 plus or minus my margin of error, which is 6.29492. And I'm just going to do that real quick here on my trusty TI. You could just as well use your phone calculator here. I just happen to have the TI handy. So 18.125 plus, the, or sorry, minus, do the lower one first, minus the margin of error. That gives me 11.83. I'm going to round to four places now. The bottom of my confidence interval would be 11.8307. I'm sorry, rounding to five places. 008 rounded to five places. And the top of my confidence interval would be the 18.125 plus the 6.29 blah, blah, blah. It gives me 24.41992. And so uh, here's what I'm getting for my confidence interval. Let's see. Can you see that? About 11.83 up to 24.42 is what I'm getting. So let's go uh, put that in the, uh, the uh, problem and see how we did. Uh, they want us to round our answers to three places. So I will have uh, 11... 0 0.830 up to 24 point, rounding that to three places would give me 420. 24.420. Okay, so hopefully all that came out correct.
And then they have one extra question for me, interpret the 95% confidence interval. So the, a confidence interval is about the population mean, right? Uh, a confidence interval is the range of plausible values for the population mean at a given confidence level and based on your sample data. Uh, let's see which of these answers make sense. We are 95% confident that all results are in this interval. Uh, never, that, that doesn't make any sense, whatever. All what results? That doesn't even make sense. We know that 95% of the results will be in this interval. Hmm, that sounds like another way of stating the same nonsensical statement. We are 95% confident that the true mean is contained in the interval. Bingo. Confidence intervals are about means. And so that is the interpretation. The other one, 95% of the data are outside this interval. No. Uh, I think we've got it. Let's see how we did. So click Submit. Cross your fingers. Yay. We're there. So, you know, uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I don't want to oversell this. I mean, it's important to be able to do this, obviously. Uh, and uh, the point of this video is to help you maybe organize your work as you tackle a problem like this. But don't forget that uh, just as important are the facts we've talked about and the ideas about, you know, what a confidence interval means, how they behave, and so on. That's just as important as this stuff. But this stuff is important, and it is a bit maybe more sort of detail oriented. You got to get all the little pieces right. Uh, and so uh, keeping notes for yourself as you work through a problem is helpful. And, uh, you know, looking at the examples that we've done in the slides and in the videos is helpful. Hope this video has been helpful. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you again shortly with some more information on inferential statistics. Y'all take care.